What's going on, everyone? I'm Daniel Rodriguez, a.k.a. Big D. It's time to review Narcos, the new show for Netflix. It's a Netflix original based off of Pablo Escobar, True Stories. Of course, they, you know, added to a little more magic and cover up some people's names, you know, but that's just the way it is, man. But most of it, 85 95% is True Story. And uh, let's get right to it. This is a spoiler review. If you have not seen the episode, please, 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 please watch it if you have Netflix. You know, I can't per se, if you don't have Netflix, I can't say like, oh, buy Netflix just for this. But, I mean, Daredevil, uh, the uh, Orange is the New Black, Sense8, I'm talking about just any other original thing. I'm pretty sure that it's worth eight bucks a month. I'm just saying. So if you don't have Netflix, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? Go get Netflix, man. Anyway, let's get right to it. First off, Narco Season 1, Episode 1, Descenso. Spoiler review, let's get right to it. It should take me less than three minutes to recap the episode, give you my pros and cons, and final score. Uh, other Netflix original shows I've reviewed real quick, I've reviewed Daredevil. I have a playlist for that on my channel. And the next one, hopefully, the next one I'll be doing is uh, Sense8 one day, but for sure Jessica Jones, I'm going to binge watch that when it releases. Let's get right to it. So, in 1989, this is like it jumps from Miami to Columbia, but the thing is it jumps around the whole... They, um, I'll get to my pros and cons in a little bit, but... Yeah, it jumps around a lot. Poison sets up a meeting. Uh, you know, Poison's not a major character or anything. The DEA ends up killing him and a few other people. Like, they kill everyone in the building where they're at. And I, I guess DEA has the right to kill every Colombian in there because that wasn't really cool. Uh, a girl walked in there, too. I don't even think she knew what was coming, but that sucks. Steve is our main character besides Pablo Escobar. Steve Murphy. And he is a DEA agent, he's a father, he's a husband. And we see this guy named, what's his name? Mateo, Mateo, and he is a cockroach, basically. They call him cockroach because he survived a shooting when all his people were shot and executed. Jose kills this guy. Jose is uh, Luis Guzman, man. Very good to see him in there. You know, he's not really having that comedic role. He's having more of that, like, intense. He looks kind of, like, the way he's doing it, it feels like Ron Perlman would do that. But, you know, Ron Perlman's not, like, Colombian or Spain or Spanish, so... You know, but he has that, like, sort of feeling in there. Like, Jose, you take him, like... You look at Luis Guzman, you're like, I don't take you seriously. But then you then you take him serious for a moment. And then he gets back to, a, like, a, like, almost close to a comedic, psychotic side. Jose kills this guy at a party. He was, like, his partner. So he does have partner agreements that he would kill them. If they don't have their, like, do their part. Pablo is uh, in a truck in his group. And they sop. And there's a bunch of stereos and TVs in there and he's stuff. And he basically makes a deal with the guys. And he knows all of their names, which is awesome. Like, he knows them. He's like, you cannot make one move in Colombia without me knowing, gentlemen. So, he meets Cockroach. And basically, they start to do cocaine. Like, I mean, they, they make cocaine. He knows how to do it well. He's like, he's basically the Heisenberg of the group. Steve is in a bowling alley with his friends. And they end up telling him that this girl was, like, looking at his booty. Looking at the booty. And he was like, well, I'm, you know, go over there, man. So he went over there. They lied. It was all a joke. Ha ha, funny 80s, 80s, you know, 80s friends. Hey, hey the girl looked at you. Oh, really? Uh, how you doing? I'm busy. Oh. Hey, can you give me your number? Just a fake number. Anything like, anything like that. So that's it. They got the number. And it was real. It was real, by the way. Real number. So um, good luck at you, Steve Murphy. Five kilos of cocaine is what uh, Pablo got at first. They want to go across the border, and, they, you know, they get a lot more kilos after that, I'm saying, but just five at first. They're making it, uh, it shows them making it and putting it, like, near a fire and everything, so that was really cool to see it, you know, like, almost like Breaking Bad. We haven't seen them make drugs in a long time, even though, you know, they're not actually making it when they're doing it. Gustavo's department, that's, that Gustavo was, like, Pablo's right-hand man. He's the one who gets it across the border and gets people to do it. We meet Lion, so he's smuggling coke to Miami to this guy named Carlos. Carlos ends up being a pilot for pablo and pregnant women they're they're like literally putting like they're dipping bags of cocaine dipping in oil and swallowing it and even into pregnant women and just regular women themselves and they swallow like 90 bags or something like if that's real like i've heard them some of them do that but 90 bags how do they get it out of their body are you telling me that they they like they shit each bag out like is that comfortable? Like, I don't think that's really... Is that, I don't think that's good for the baby, either. That's like... Damn, that baby gonna be coked up, man. So, Carlos flies plane. He has, like, 1,300 kilos in there. 
Uh, Pablo brings whores, the, 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 the greatest Brazilian whores, and I was like, well, you know what, I might as well stay to the party here. Partners with Jose, pregnant women end up dying, and Steve's wife cared, because the wife says like a nurse. So it goes back from Steve to Pablo. Steve, uh, he's a teenager with his partner. He has a partner named Kevin, who doesn't even look like he fits in the cake. looks like he's an actor who needs a job. Uh, so... They killed a teenager and everything, and the Colonel, Colonel Herrera goes rogue, basically, to, because, like, Pablo, like, paid a bunch of the military and everything to be on his side, but Herrera went against him, so Pablo gets arrested, and he's smiling in the mugshot, and they actually show the actual Pablo Escobar mugshot. Cockro turns on Pablo also, and the deal is going down. The deal is going down because Kevin and... Steve are pretending to buy drugs and everything, and this Colombian hitman come, or dealers come, and they end up shooting, and Kevin, Kevin is killed, and he's really, and Kevin and the dealer are killed, and Steve, you know, he jumps around, and he ends up getting, getting the guy who shot his partner, but they go to trial, and the guy is let go, there's a Ronald Reagan speech with his wife, Pablo is killing Cockroach, which, you know, finally, you know, that, that guy... Wouldn't have lasted long, I knew that. Pablo wants the DEA's head, half a million dollars for it, and he says, you know, just for English wise, fucking gringos. What did I think about this episode overall, guys? This this series premiere. First off, what did I think it was going to be? You know, I, I didn't know Pablo Escobar was going to be in here that much, and I do got to say, the actor who plays Pablo Escobar seriously looks like Pablo Escobar. Like, no lie, he's like 90% Pablo there. Like, he looks awesome, he looks great. Pablo Escobar's my boy, the cocaine king. Uh, the Scarface before the Scarface was uh, Tony Montana, you know. Not coming out of Colombia. So, uh, overall, what did I think, guys? Uh, I'm going to get started with my pros first and then get to the cons. Pablo Escobar himself. The acting, the way he says things, the way he knows deals. Like, he's a deal man. He knows how to do make deals, he knows how to negotiate, he knows how to slither his way around, he doesn't take no for an answer, and if he does, he'll make a deal with you, he also, if you tell him what to do, like, this is my kitchen, well, you're gonna end up getting a, you know, you're gonna get a cap in your ass, basically, I love the locations we go, we do go to Miami, and then Columbia, and we go to a few other places, we go to the woods, we see different locations here, and it's, it's, you know, I thought for a first episode, that's really, it really tells us where we're going, of, uh, you know, get used to being in the woods, making the cocaine, and, you know, a beautiful scene going in an airplane, like, uh, with Car Carlos when he had the kilos in there, and you see islands and everything, so that was really cool. The editing is really good. I, I mean, I have no problem with the editing. I think that for a Netflix show, it's fine. I, I don't think Netflix has editing problems at all when they're editing their shows. Uh, the music in here, of course, always works well. The Colombian thing, because I don't watch a lot of Colombian things. I don't think they... You know, they don't release Colombian stuff every single day. Drugs, and it's been a while since I've seen a sort of, like, drug smuggling type of show. It's been quite some time. So, that's really cool. I, I do enjoy seeing that a lot more often. Uh, Steve Murphy narrates the episode, and I guess he narrates all ten episodes. I won't update. I've only seen two episodes of Narco so far. But the narration, it's not a hard concept to follow, because he tells you the story. And if you don't understand something, he basically makes you understand so that's a good thing because if he didn't narrate i'd be lost man the action in here there's there's not like a heart you know not a, i mean there's not a lot of action in here but the action that we do see sometimes gets my heart and like a gunshot you didn't think was going to happen happens and it's brutal it's a very brutal and intense show i mean people getting executed you got well i mean you got a lot of stuff is what i'm saying it's even uh, more intense in the second episode uh, the the process of cocaine, the way that they make it and how they show it, I'm glad that they didn't hide that because since it's Netflix, they can actually show that. Uh, the ending, I really enjoyed the ending a lot when he was like fucking gringos because it's like I'm on Pablo Escobar's side. Now, he's, a, he's not a good guy to idolize or praise, but I'm not really feeling Steve Murphy, and I'll tell you why in a few minutes. As well, smuggling, the characters themselves, Gustavo, Carlos, Lion. Lion reminded me of the guy from Pulp Fiction, that, that drug dealer guy, man. I do enjoy the characters a lot. Like, Steve Murphy and Kevin, eh, like, those were okay. 
But the whole Pablo Escobar side and Cockroach and them, like the way they were written and then the way that they showed themselves and they all had different char characteristics, I enjoyed that as well. I think that was totally fine. The actual footage, the, and they show a lot of actual Brazilian, Colombian footage in here, man. So that was really cool. I, I, I thought that, you know, they showed the real Pablo Escobar. Like, they're not hiding Pablo, the real one. It's just the actor, and then they actually show the real thing, which in his mugshot, he didn't have a mustache. But he had a mug, like a mustache in the show. So I like how they don't hide that. Uh, Kevin's death was unexpected. I didn't expect Steve's partner to be shot that early. Uh, it wasn't emotional. You know, you'd think he'd be emotional for his partner, but that's one of the things that really didn't stick me for this episode, I guess. And uh, the whole dealing aspect of Pablo, the way he deals, always gets me excited because he's smooth, man. He's, he's, he's smooth. Chris smooth. Now the cons of this episode, man. The time jumps. If they're time jumping from the 70s to the 80s, then why do they look the same? They look the freaking same. The mustache is the same. The hair is the same. The clothes are the, like, not the clothes, but they went from the 70s with Pablo to 89 to Steve. And I don't get it. They're just, they don't really specify their age. They don't specify what they've been doing over the past 10 years. It's kind of like he's just the, the, the drug king. And it makes it look like he makes money so easily. And it doesn't really show how we really got there. Steve's action, like Pablo's action was fine, the way like the guns and everything, but Steve, when he shot that teenager, we didn't see the bullets shoot the teenager, we didn't even hear him scream or nothing, just the way that that action was presented, like the guy was waiting for the gun, the teenager, and he shot at the car and everything, and they, they went behind the car, just that, I didn't dig that, like I just didn't enjoy that scene at all, but when people get shot and the bullets go through them, it's pretty brutal, Steve's wife, I guess Steve's wife is the girl from the bar. They don't really explain that. They don't, you know, they just, I guess they expect us to know, like if we know the story or something. So I guess he got married to the, the girl from the bar. I guess that's his wife. I don't know. They don't explain it, like I said. And also, like, they look the same over the years. I said that. And there is some cheesy dialogue sometimes when Steve is narrating, like it's a few cheesy things. Uh, that kind of ruined the moment you're kind of like yeah that you know there are a few cheesy things in there and they're, they're they don't really explain like oh why did the why did the colombian people shoot down the deal you know if it's for pablo and everything why did they why you know it doesn't really make sense in that few parts but other than that i'm going to give this series premiere of narcos an A minus, secondarily a solid B. It's great to me, man. I, I I didn't expect to enjoy Narcos as much as I did. I'm honestly being truthful. I didn't expect to think it was going to be this great. It's not like the greatest show. And I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen all ten episodes. It could be the greatest Netflix thing ever to come out. But still, I think it was great premiere. I mean, every Pablo scene is fine. It's it's awesome. It's just the Steve scenes. I don't. The guy looks like the guy from True B Blood, Alexander Skarsgård. I rather would have had him play Steve Murphy, cause Steve Murphy guy, I don't know. He just doesn't. He doesn't look like a DEA agent. He doesn't feel like a DEA agent. He looks like he's not that smart. I don't know what's going on there. I mean, I really wish we could have had some better DEA agent. But other than that, those are my cons. Those are my pros. Hopefully, all of you enjoyed. Comment down below. Let me know what did you think about the Narco series premiere, and I'll see you for the other nine episodes. And, uh, well, I guess that's the sign-off, ladies and gentlemen. May the Spock be with you. Always. How's it going, everyone? I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to also check out my other videos. I do TV show reviews, movie reviews. I do also game reviews and game unboxings, movie unboxings. I do a movie podcast, a superhero podcast, much, much more. So go ahead and check out the channel. Thanks for watching again. See you all next time.